Hey everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Mincheft here uh, with a look at the extended forecast because it does look like the wet pattern is over and the drier pattern is setting up across not just Northern California, but all uh, of California as we head through January. Uh, the rainfall totals that we saw on Friday, about a quarter of an, in quarter of an inch for most of the valley. Uh, upper Sacramento Valley, half an inch of rain. Uh, definitely some of the eastern suburbs of Sacramento, though, uh, coming in over six-tenths of an inch. But this is likely the last round of rain that we're going to see for a while. And in the grand scheme of things for January, when we average about four inches of rain, when we're talking about three-tenths of an inch of rain downtown, it's not much uh, of a you know, drop in the bucket, uh, not to use... Uh, any puns there, but certainly uh, we would expect these January storms to be much bigger. Now, I do have to point out in terms of snow on Friday, uh, we definitely had enough to cause plenty of travel issues. Uh, 80 and 50 uh, were closed off and on on Friday due uh, to spin outs. Now, back to the headlines, patchy morning fog through the weekend, mix of sun and clouds in the afternoon. But again, that drier pattern is going to last into at least the middle part of January. On Saturday, we are dry, partly cloudy, highs in the mid to upper 50s for much of the valley, 53 Sacramento, 59 Vacaville and Fairfield, 56 in Stockton, 57 Modesto, 54 in Angels Camp, 52 Auburn, upper 30s and low 40s in the high country. But we are dry across the region. Some fog this morning, some clouds through the afternoon, then we basically uh, do it again Sunday. Some clouds in the morning, some fog in the morning, and that continues into the afternoon as well. There'll be plenty of sunshine and plenty of periods with sun, uh, but it won't be totally sunny. We are going to have uh, some of those clouds moving through. That pattern continues through about the first half uh, of this coming week. But notice high temperatures are climbing. We'll be in the low 60s by the middle part of the week. I do expect some sunnier skies from Wednesday onwards. Uh, and we're going to float a little bit above average. The average high 55 to 56 degrees. I'm looking at upper 50s to low 60s for much of the coming work week. The, uh, the Pacific North American pattern, which is an indicator uh, a bit of an indicator of whether we'll see drier weather or wetter weather. Basically, what the PNA, the Pacific North American pattern, what the PNA is looking at is high pressure. Is there high pressure off the west coast of the United States, or is there not? If there's not high pressure, then we get a negative PNA, and that essentially equates to the storm doors open. We can get storms coming into Northern California, typically a cooler and wetter pattern. When high pressure does build in and set off the coast, we get positive PNA. This is typically a warmer and drier setup. And this is what we see, both the American model and the European model, uh, showing positive PNA through about January 12th. Then it starts to taper off a little bit, kind of go back to neutral, but we don't see a big flip into that negative PNA uh, even as we work out towards January 20th. So that tells me this pattern is going to be fairly stagnant. There may be some opportunities for rain as we get towards the middle part uh, of the month between about January 12th and January 20th, but there's not a real strong signal headed towards uh, headed through the middle of the month that we are going to get a pretty wet pattern developing. These things change. It doesn't mean that's uh, set in stone, but certainly the indicator as we look long range is that high pressure is going to have an impact on our weather pattern. And indeed, we already see it building in off the coast as we go through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It does build in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to be at and above 60 degrees. And you see that there with that high pressure off the coast. So that storm door is closed. We will see likely a low pressure dropping in uh, to the desert southwest. This could bring a chance to sh some showers to Southern California, but more importantly, it's going to be an offshore wind event as well. So we are likely going to see uh, a stronger Santa Ana wind event shaping up uh, Wednesday-ish, middle part of the week. So maybe Tuesday through Thursday, be looking at that, especially uh, in Southern California. Although even here in Northern California, we will have some northerly winds, but we've had the rain and the snow. So we are not really all that concerned with fire weather. We have not really had any rain in Southern California. So certainly fire season still ongoing down there. We will talk more about the lack of rain in Southern California in a second, but I want to continue to look. Now we're uh, Friday, January 10th. High pressure continues to sit just off the coast of California, keeping the storm door closed, directing all the storms up into British Columbia, the Pacific Northwest, uh, and into the uh, eastern part of the U.S. And in fact, I'll step out of the way a little bit more. You can see some of those systems moving through uh, the Great Plains, parts of the Mid-Atlantic, uh, the upper Great Plains, they're going to be colder than average. They're going to have some ice. They're going to have some snow and colder weather. We are going to be very mild and we're going to be dry for much of January. Even as we get towards January 13th or so, 
high pressure still off the coast. So that is why we've got that positive PNA, right? That positive Pacific North American pattern indicating high pressure off the coast. And indeed, as we look at the map, that is what we see. So the 8 to 14 day climate outlook, uh, not surprising, January 11th through 17th, likely drier across much of the U.S. West, including California. In terms of snowpack now, here's where we are uh, as of January 4th. Northern Sierra is doing actually very well. 161% of average to date, 57% uh, of that April 1st average. Central Sierra, 94% average to date, 35% of the April 1st average. Southern Sierra, 27% of April 1st average uh, and we we really care about that April 1 average because April 1st is typically our peak snowpack so we measure or gauge not necessarily measure but we gauge where we are in terms of uh, that snowpack based on the average at April 1st the average to date can be very inflated especially uh, early in the season at this point we're starting to get a better idea of that average to date it does make a little more sense but certainly uh, when we're talking about the first one to three snowstorms, we could be 300% of average to date, but only 8% of April 1 average. So uh, it is still good news that Northern Sierra is 161% of average to date. That's good, right? It's always good to be above average. Uh, but really, the numbers that we care about are in the darker blue, that percent of April 1st. And uh, Northern Sierra is, again, halfway, more than halfway uh, to that April 1st peak snowpack. We are lacking in the central and southern Sierra. We're going to get more numbers coming in over the weekend of the most recent snowfall we just had, though. Uh, so stay tuned for those numbers. We'll continue to update. But we are going to need a series of good snowstorms, not just one or two storms uh, spaced out over a few days to a few weeks. We, we need a consistent kind of train of storms in order to really build our snowpack. And it needs to stay cooler. We can't have these milder warm-ups either. Otherwise, that snowpack melts off and those numbers will go down. In terms of rainfall, downtown Sacramento for the month of January, total so far three tenths of an inch, like what we saw average to date, basically that. We're basically where we ought to be for the month of January, only a few days in at this point. Uh, uh, the water year as a whole, though, started October 1st. Total so far, uh, 7.81 inches, average to date just over six and a half inches. So we are running above average on the water year by an inch and a quarter, which is good news. You always, again, you always want to be above average, and that's where we find ourselves in Sacramento. Statewide, though, it's a different story. Here are precip totals from October 1st through January 3rd. Not bad for Northern California. Yikes for Southern California, for sure. Look at that LA. That is uh, technically LAX. Just three hundredths of an inch of rain. San Diego, uh, 14 hundredths of an inch of rain. Palm Springs, we got a zero. We got a goose egg on the board there. Bakersfield, inch and a half. Stockton, four and a half inches, basically. Sacramento, 7.8 inches. San Francisco, 8.68 8 inches. But that just tells you what we've seen so far. These numbers tell you how far above or below average we are. Northern California, we're doing great. Reading, seven and a half inches above normal. Eureka, almost 10 inches more rain than normal through January 3rd. Sacramento, like we talked about, inch and a quarter above. San Francisco, also basically inch and a quarter above. Stockton, Modesto, a little bit below by about a quarter of an inch. But honestly, not that bad, right? That's easily overcome, uh, overcomable. But look at Southern California. Los Angeles, almost four inches below average in terms of rainfall. San Diego, three inches below average. Palm Springs, an inch and a quarter below average. For LAX, it is the driest start to a water year on record, with records going back to 1944. For San Diego, it is the third driest start to a water year on records, with records going back to 1850. It is dry down in Southern California. They cannot buy rainfall down in SoCal. And I'll tell you what, this is a very typical La Nina pattern. In La Nina winters, this is typically the precipitation pattern that sets up wet across the Pacific Northwest and the far northern part of the state, dry across the southern half of the state and across much of the west or across much of the southern U.S. That is exactly what we saw. If you think back to that precip map we just looked at, basically Sacramento to the north is above average in terms of rainfall. Basically, Sacramento to the south is below average, and that's especially true down in Southern California. The numbers do get a little more complicated. I've talked about this before. This is not a strong La Nina event. This is a weak La Nina event. And in weak La Nina events, the percent normal precip across the state, Sacramento Valley, about 98%, San Joaquin Valley, about 101%, Bay Area, 94%. So generally, in a weak La Nina winter, we get about 90 to 100 percent of average precip across Northern California, which makes sense. You think back to the map we just saw a minute ago, 
uh, the precip map right above average across Northern California. The La Nina map typically wetter than average across the far northern part of the state. That's what we see as we go down to Southern California, though, 81 percent for the coast, 91 percent in the deserts, 95 percent uh, as you work right into the Southern Sierra. Uh, so we'll say 80 to 90 percent of an average precip year in Southern California, but they are way behind where they need to be. So we definitely need some rain down in Southern California. Moving back up to the Sacramento Valley, though, these numbers here are for the Sac Valley. Weak La Niñas are not a guarantee to be dry. Moderate La Niñas and strong La Niñas almost always are dry. There's very few instances where we get a wet moderate La Niña or a wet strong La Niña. But with weak La Niña, it's not a guarantee. You can't take it to the bank. It's not a slam dunk. In 2016-17, remember that was a big drought busting year. 156% of average precipitation in the Sacramento Valley. That was a drought busting year for us. 2022, 2023, 127% of average. Another drought busting year for us. So the two most recent drought busting winters happened during weak La Nina uh, conditions. However, that's 2016-17, 156% of average. One winter later, 2017 to 18, just 76% of average. These can flip. We can have really wet years. We can have really dry years. This is just five years that I picked. They're very notable years, but there certainly were plenty of years as well during weak La Nina winters that were dry. Don't let these numbers make it look like it's skewed wet because certainly there were, uh, again, plenty of dry, weak La Nina winters across the Sacramento Valley. It just goes to show you it is very variable for us, especially in Northern California, in terms of what we can expect. But certainly, over the foreseeable future, the next three to seven days are dry. I'm not seeing any rain in the forecast. I'm seeing increasing sunshine. If anything, temperatures warming up as well. Uh, lows are still going to be uh, in the upper 30s to low 40s for many mornings, so it's still going to be jacket weather. You just don't necessarily need that waterproof jacket. The extended part of the forecast, uh, we're still seeing plenty of sunshine, seeing temperatures in the afternoon, upper 50s, low 60s. Again, that's a little bit above average for the time of year. The average high anywhere from about 55 to 56. So when we're talking about temps near 60, that's certainly uh, running roughly five degrees or so warmer than normal for uh, early to mid January. No rainfall in sight. Again, as we talked about, that pattern could change uh, as we work towards kind of the end of January. If you're watching this on YouTube, I recommend getting the ABC 10 plus app, especially if you liked this video, uh, because we've got tons of these extended forecasts and explainers on the ABC 10 plus app. It's all part of the weather play playlist. We also have uh, weather, water, and climate specials up there on ABC 10 Plus that you can check out done by the weather team here at ABC 10, including myself. Highly recommend you check those out if you are, are at all interested uh, in California water, California climate, how the state is preparing uh, for um, uh, how the state is preparing for these ultra wet winters and also these really dry years as well. Again, that's all in the ABC 10 Plus app. Thanks for watching. I hope you've had a great start to the new year.